Hello class, how are y'all doing? We are going to be learning about metals and non-metals today. I am sure you have heard the term metals before, but we are going to dive on in. Some definitions before we start our activity that you may or may not be familiar with is luster, malleability, and conductivity. Luster is going to be the shininess of a material. Can anybody give me an example of something that would have luster? Diamonds. That's a wonderful example. Anybody else? Hi, right. Sorry. <laughs> Somebody likes that. Mm -hmm. awesome. I love it. Okay. The next term is going to be malleability, which is the ability to uh, reshape a material without it breaking. Mm -hmm. Can I? Can y'all think of any examples of something that would be malleable? Plato. Copper. That's a great example. I love it. Right. And then the next is conductivity, is the which is the ability of a material to conduct electricity. You might not be as familiar with conductivity, but think of lightning storms and metal pipes in bathrooms. You wouldn't want to take a shower when there's a lightning storm out. Let's see. All right. So we are going to explore what each one is with these tricks. So let me hand these out to you. You already have your uh, rolls in front of you. I'm going to need the materials manager to go ahead and grab a basket in the corner of the room there. Oh, is it the one with this one? Yes, it's yeah. the one with all the samples in it. We are going to be testing for malleability, conductivity, and luster, and we're going to record the results on the sheet. On the sheet, we have instructions to test for each. The most tricky one is going to be the conductivity. I'm going to go ahead and give you an example of how to do that one. We don't need the wires inside, but we are going to need this part. So I'm going to go ahead and do an example. Let's do example three. This is the trickiest one. So you want to make sure it's turned on here. And with these two, you're going to make sure both of them are touching the sample at the same time, and you'll see a reaction. If it goes on, then that means that it is conducting. And that's either a yes or no on the other side of the sheet. Can we touch it while we do that? Yes. yes. With the sulfur, or is it going? Yeah, with some of the samples, though, uh, if it's in a bag, leave it in a bag. Also, keep in mind to record other observations if you have time, what the color, how does it feel temperature-wise, if it's cold, or if it's room temperature, uh, weight compared to other samples. And we're going to go ahead and start now. You'll have about seven or so minutes, but I'll tell you whenever you get closer. Okay. So, First. This is sample number one. Okay. okay. It is conducted. So um, yes, sir. Sample number two. Or do you want to do like everything? Like Sample one is conductive, sample two, conductive, sample three is conductive. Yes, conductive. Number four. Oh, yeah. I think we still need in there. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it's right. Uh, 
That was five? Yes. Oh. And I'm pretty sure oh, that's that's tree of not gonna do this. The what? The tree of not gonna do this. The tree of not gonna do this. The tree of not gonna do this. So wait, the tree is gonna be yeah, but it's like shiny. Okay. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Copper is See? Okay, pretend like, oh, yeah. But, like, is it malleable in this one? And then this one is. Yeah. Yeah, but it's good. Yeah. This one is. They're both malleable. This one is a no. It's a no. I'm pretty sure four is a no. some of the explanations of metals and non-metals. We're going to go back real fast just so you can take another look. Um, so on average, we're going to see that metals are very lustrous, which is another word for luster, which means having the quality of luster. Um, there's another word here. Uh, 
when I'm talking about ductility is just the able, ability to be a wire. So would you expect to see a branch as a wire? No. But have you ever seen copper wire in your houses? Things of that nature? Okay. So um, they're usually gray and silver in color. There's obviously exceptions for that. Can you guys think of some? Number three. Number three? Okay. Yeah. Other, I'm thinking really obvious. They're already out there. Jewelry? Oh, yeah. Gold. gold. So gold's probably the most common metal that you're going to see that's not going to be that gray or silver color. Uh, they often feel cool to the touch when you pick them up. Um, obviously, if, unless they've been sitting in the sun, they usually feel a little bit cooler. Whereas non-metals on average are, they kind of just don't feel, you don't feel any noticeable temperature, usually. Um, <clears throat> so, some examples there. Oxygen, obviously, is what? Is it a gas? It's just air, right? Carbon can come in a couple different forms. We all know carbon dioxide, those types of things. So what we're going to do is with your partner, you guys have your, about to pass these up, your explanation guide. So you're going to have a couple questions on there. Um, and I want you guys to go back through your chart and try to figure out which samples were metals and which samples were non-metals. And then after you've done that, um, <clears throat> go through and try to answer these questions, starting with number one, number two, which are what similarities did you see with your metal and non-metal samples? <laughs> Give you guys probably like, two minutes. If it helps you guys, you can label on your chart wherever is convenient which ones are metals and non metals. One more minute. If you answer those guys, better pencil down. Cool. All right. So, can I get someone to share some similarities that they saw with their metal samples? We said that they were all lustrous and they were all conductive. Okay, good. That's what we're supposed to be seeing. What about our non-metals? Does someone want to share for those? Cassie. <laughs> <laughs> um, none of the non-metals had luster. They were not malleable and they were not conductive. Okay, good. Um, okay, so what we're going to do, let's go ahead and go through questions three and four. So describe the differences you observe between both. Um, and then write down some examples of metals and non-metals that you use every day. One more minute. Salt. That's good. Okay. Some examples for metals. Oh, yeah, 
plants. Okay. <laughs> oh, plants. That's a plant. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're going to start whispering out here. Plants. <laughs> 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 Okay, if you're getting stumped on examples, go ahead and put your pencils down. Start wrapping up your thinking. Okay, cool. Let's get someone to share some examples of metals that they thought of. Okay, silverware. That's a good one. Just start shouting them out for metal examples. Jewelry. I'm sorry? Jewelry. Jewelry, okay. Good. Um, let's smell jewelry. Um, the back of the refrigerator. That's <laughs> 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 Car parts. Car parts, yeah. Car parts. Oh, that's good. Wow, I'm going to say refridge. Yeah. <laughs> I'll refridge. say car parts. Yeah, we'll <laughs> Okay, so obviously these are things we use all the time. Um, fun fact, silverware is called silverware because it usually it used to be made out of silver all the time, but now it's probably not. We probably don't have all the silverware. Okay, cool. Let's think of some non-metal examples. Clothes. Clothes, okay. Plants. Yeah. Plants, that's a good one. Water. Clothes. Plants. Water. Obvious big ones. Okay, so. Um, <laughs> Let's do, let's, last thing we're going to do is, in your own words, number five on your chart, with your partner, define a metal and a non-metal using the things that we've talked about. Metal is shiny. Metal is shiny. teach the periodic table just yet, but this is going to help flesh out your definition of metals and non-metals. So, periodic table, on average, looks something like this. Your metals are all going to be over here, um, and your non-metals are going to be over here. The only exceptions are another thing we're not going to talk about yet, but they lie right here. So, when we think about that, non-metals, and let's go back to our examples, are, is oxygen a solid, usually? Yep. No. No. Is it a liquid usually? No. no. So oftentimes, most of our non-metals are going to end up being a gas. Um, this isn't a hard and fast rule. A good example is carbon dioxide. Um, dry ice is just frozen carbon dioxide. Um, but with our metals, they're almost, for the most part, going to be solids. So if you think of iron, which oftentimes are your nails, aluminum foil, which is one of your samples in there, the lead sinker, our fishing pieces, those are all solids. You're usually going to, metals are commonly going to be found in their solid state. Um, or in the molten state, which we'll, you know, we'll address that later. And then there's some exceptions like mercury, which are actually a liquid at their, their natural state. Cool. All right, well, that is all that we have for you guys. So, great. Also, the mercury. Oh, materials so manager can put the materials back on the side table. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. 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 Yeah.